Hey everyone, Daniel here. You're watching Lepta TV. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the United States. If someone's before the Supreme Court, it's a really big deal, okay? The Supreme Court handles some of the most important matters in the United States. In New Testament times, the Jewish people had a council known as the Sanhedrin, and it wasn't exactly like the Supreme Court in the United States, but the Sanhedrin was their Supreme Court. The Sanhedrin was led by whoever was high priest at the time. For example, Caiaphas was the high priest at the time of Jesus's crucifixion and led this high court, the Sanhedrin. Jesus appeared before the Sanhedrin before he was taken to Pontius Pilate. You can read about that in Luke 22 and 23 in Acts 4 and 5. The apostles were brought before the Sanhedrin in Acts 7. Stephen spoke to the Sanhedrin just before he was killed. The Apostle Paul spoke in front of the Sanhedrin in Acts 23, and that's by far my favorite reference to the Sanhedrin because it's so full of drama. I mean, Paul opens up by saying, I've lived in all good conscience before God, and the high priest Ananias, the leader of the Sanhedrin, literally tells the people around Paul, hey, smack Paul on the mouth. Smack him. And Paul responds, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. I mean, it got crazy. He literally calls him a wall. And I don't know. I guess that's a good insult. You know, a wall. Calling someone a wall and whitewashed means covering up terrible things, crimes, scandals, things like that. But he says this to the high priest. I mean, that's insane. No one spoke to the high priest that way. And the people in the Sanhedrin are like, whoa, 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 Paul. Dude, I know you're mad. He said, smack him, but he's a high priest. And they ask him, do you revile? In other words, do you hate the high priest? And then Paul's like, hey, I didn't know. I didn't know he was the high priest, which makes me think maybe he just like heard it and was like, whoever said that is a wall. A whitewashed wall, because it would have been really obvious who Ananias was. He might have just heard the words and was just like, I've got the perfect insult. That person is a whitewashed wall. But Paul ends up backing it up, okay? He's like, I didn't realize it was Ananias. And then he does something really brilliant. He turns the whole Sanhedrin against itself. He divides it. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. It's a stroke of genius. I love that story. But when we read passages about this council, it might be easy not to realize how big of a deal it was. Only a few versions of the Bible actually use the word Sanhedrin. Most of the time, it's just called the council, okay? But this council was the Sanhedrin. And for people to come before the Sanhedrin was huge. It was intimidating. There were 71 members called judges who were part of the Sanhedrin. And it was literally led by the high priest serious stuff. To be brought before the Sanhedrin is to speak to 71 of some of the most powerful people of their day. And because they judged the Jewish people as a whole, there were both Pharisees and Sadducees in the Sanhedrin. Pharisees and Sadducees were the two main Jewish groups in Jesus's day. So the Sanhedrin was the highest court of the Jewish people made up of 71 judges. Some of them were Pharisees and some of them were Sadducees. And this was great for representing the interest of these two groups, but they didn't see eye to eye on everything. And that's where we'll jump right back into Acts 22. Paul, as you remember, stood before the Sanhedrin. He said, I've lived in all good conscience before God. The high priest gets offended by this, tells the people around Paul, hey, smack him, smack him. <laughs> and Paul's like, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. And the people are like, wow, wow, man, do you hate the high priest? And he's like, I didn't know he was the high priest. And then he decides, hey, I know the Sanhedrin has these two groups in it. 
the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they don't see eye to eye on two issues. They disagree about the resurrection and they disagree about angels, among other things, but those are two big ones. And Pharisees believe in both. The Sadducees don't believe in either. And Paul knows this and he uses it. The Bible says that knowing that there were Pharisees and Sadducees there, he said, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. And I'm here being judged for the hope of the resurrection. And instantly the Sanhedrin is divided. The Pharisees now defending Paul. And it, and it gets out of hand really quickly, out of control, completely out of control. In fact, the soldiers had to remove Paul because they were afraid he was literally going to get pulled to pieces, the Bible says. They were like, this dude's going to die <laughs> if we don't take him away. We've got to rescue him. And they do. They pull him out. This, for me, highlights just how scary and intimidating the Sanhedrin could be. The Sanhedrin was the highest court of the Jewish people in that day, 71 judges. So it was a big group of people. There's this weight of, oh my goodness, this is, this is the Sanhedrin, but it wasn't Judge Judy. All right, to put it lightly, it wasn't Judge Judy. It wasn't calm. It often was not peaceful. Repeatedly, we see the Sanhedrin call for violence or resort to it if they get angry. If you made them angry, you could literally lose your life as Stephen did. Paul was rescued by these soldiers, even with some of the Sanhedrin defending him. Paul still could have been torn to bits. And yet we're told in Acts 4.13, when the apostles Peter and John stood before the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin saw their boldness. Their boldness. If you stood before the Sanhedrin, I mean, as we've just said, you could get slapped. The high priest ordered that Jesus be slapped when he was before the Sanhedrin. Paul was ordered to be slapped, but that could be getting off easy. And they were bold in the face of real mortal danger. You potentially could get killed if you faced the Sanhedrin. Getting smacked is getting off easy. I mean, Gamaliel, the famous and well-known member of the Sanhedrin we read about in the book of Acts, defended the apostles and the Sanhedrin agreed with him and the apostles still got beaten. That's in Acts chapter 5. It's like, all right, let's, let's let them go. All right, sounds good. Bring them in. We'll tell them. Okay. We've listened to Gamaliel. All right. He defended you guys. All right. We're going to let you go, but we're still going to beat you. I mean, you're going to get all bloody and then, and then you can go, which tells me even if they're letting you go, you could still potentially face some intense stuff. So when you read about the council, just know it wasn't a walk in the park, at least if you were saying things that made the Sanhedrin angry. And yet, in the scriptures we see, God gives what? Boldness and strength to those who stood before the Sanhedrin. And I have no doubt if he gave them that courage in such terrifying circumstances or potentially terrifying circumstances, God will give you the boldness and the strength and the wisdom you need no matter what you face. We all have our challenges. We have our stuff to walk through. But please know that the same God who gave boldness to those who face the Sanhedrin is here for you no matter what you face. When I think of the Sanhedrin, I think of the boldness God gave his people. May we all be glad recipients of God's boldness as we face the various trials in our lives. Amen? Amen. If this video was a blessing to you and you'd like to watch more or even join our online community, I invite you to take a moment and click the subscribe button. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you can comment below or you can email us at contact.leptochurch.com. Thanks for watching this video on the Sanhedrin. I hope it's been encouraging to you that God will give you the boldness and strength to face whatever comes your way. May God abundantly bless you and your family and your community wherever you are. 
and I will see you on the next video.